Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome. Okay. And we have some translators here. Bienvenue à tous. And we need to uh, welcome people in Swahili. Karibu nyote kwa mkutano wa jioni ya wakati wa leo. Oh, and in Spanish. Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Qué bueno que están aquí con nosotros. Okay. We are so glad to have you all here. Um, we want to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. So we welcome him. Okay. And I guess we are ready, ready to go. Okay. So glad to hear what God is doing around the world with having people begin houses of prayer. It's such an amazing thing. So we love it that you're planning to start houses of prayer in your nation. And we know that God loves it too. It, I feel like it is so on his heart. And you all are so on his heart as you're planning to begin houses of prayer in your nation. So I want to make sure that we invite Lord Jesus. Um, so true Holy Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just invite you to come and you and your precious Holy Spirit would take control of this meeting, that you would have your way, that you would be glorified in this. You have promised that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you're here in our midst. So we gather in your name, we gather in the name of Jesus, and we invite you to come and be in our midst. And we glorify you, and we want to give you all the praise and honor and glory, Lord Jesus and Holy Father, for everything that's done in this meeting today. We say, be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Now we have a special treat. We have Rachel. We have Rachel Davis, who directs the House of Prayer in, in Bolivia, Anticipando. And she will be leading us in our worship this morning. So we will be getting Rachel on right now. Oh Lord, we just welcome you. We really welcome you with our with our voices, Father God. We've, we've already prayed. We've already been connected with you this morning, but we just really want to lift you up and say, Holy Spirit, beyond all else, you are welcome this morning. Bind us to you, Lord. Bind us to each other, we pray in Jesus' name. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. Yes, we are here for you. And let your breath Come from heaven, fill our hearts with your light. We are here for you. Yes, we are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy. God, let your fire fall. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, you alone are worthy, God, let 
let your fire pour. And let our shout be your anthem. Let renown fill the skies. We are here for you. Yes, we are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. Yes, we are here for you. To you alone, uh, our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. Yes, you alone are holy. Only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. One desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall. We welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with love. We welcome you with love. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Let every soul awake. Let every heart adore, Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. You our hearts are open, nothing here is here. Holy Spirit, come. 
do what you need to do, do what you want to do. I don't know if anyone wants to pray or just say a welcoming prayer. You're you're welcome to. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Father. For your spirit, we welcome you, precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. just want to thank you that you you are crowned with the oil of gladness lord you have you have such an anointing of joy lord i just pray that as we hear from you as we share lord as we learn as we are gathering together lord it will be like that oil that's falling anointing on that anointing on Aaron's head that just runs down his beard, that anointing where brothers and sisters join together in harmony, Lord. I pray it will just bring you joy this morning, Jesus. I pray that that anointing of joy would be strengthening to those who need refreshing today, those who need encouragement, those who need, Lord, that spring in their step again. Come, Lord Jesus, come and just as you are so anointed with joy, as you have joy just dripping off your head, Lord, would you just bring that joy to everyone gathered together today, Lord? Let your joy be our strength in Jesus' name. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. I would like to now introduce Pastor Ann Hubbard. Uh, Pastor Ann is the CEO of the Joshua Generation, and she's going to uh, lead us in an opening prayer. Here is Pastor Ann. Ah, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone. A really good turnout. Thank you for all the people from India that have made the effort to join. Ah. Just before I pray, I would like to just give you a little bit of background how all this came about. It's only two months ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, would you build me houses of prayer? And I said, yes. And he asked me four times. The fourth time, I thought, why are you asking me four times? There's something I'm not asking you. So I said, what will this look like? And he said, it will take time. It will take sacrifice. Then I was praying with a pastor. And as I prayed, we were actually praying for him to be able to get, he was stranded in a nation. And I suddenly started praying about it for our houses of prayer. And as I prayed, I saw these houses on fire. And then the Lord reaffirmed what he'd already said to me. He said, if you will do this and you make me the center of it all, I will fill them with my glory. And anyone who comes into these fire houses of prayer will not go out the same. But not only will they be changed, but the surrounding area. And as I prayed with this pastor, 
the Holy Spirit started to show me fire going right across Africa and then right across the world and that this would bring revival. And I don't believe this is just revival spiritually. I believe this is health-wise, that this is going to affect body, soul, and spirit. This is a new type of revival. Then he took me to where the ark was left with, um, let me just read it to you if you don't mind, to Samuel. The ark was left with a gigabyte called uh, Ab Abinabad. And when the ark was left there, the actual ark caused, um, he flourished and everything about him flourished. And David then went to get the ark. And he put it on a cart. But what David did, and Uzziah, when the cart stumbled, touched it and he put, fell down dead. But David hadn't realized that God had actually ordained how the ark should be moved. And I'm telling you all this because I feel that these houses of prayer that he's going to fill with his glory Read about how David moved that ark, what he did. He worshipped. He prayed. Every few steps they stopped and they honoured God. And what we're doing is we are going to honour God today. So my prayer is, Father God, would you come down in your might and your power? Would you fill this platform with your glory? Lord, as people set up the houses of prayer as people set up the firehouses may it change them spiritually mentally physically psychologically may it affect their families may it affect their churches may it affect their prayer movements may it affect everybody that's involved lord let your glory fall in this meeting send your fire lord your fire of cleansing your fire of glory, your fire to do your work. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I hand over to you, Jennifer. Um, and Pastor Ann, would you like to share the prophetic word that was given about the fire? I would love to. This is from um, Lee. Um, and this is what he said. I'm sorry, Lee. Apologize, but I I'll try and say your name, Oglisby. The houses of prayer will bring a fresh anointing to the continent of Africa. I, Lee, saw a great fire, like a wildfire, but it wasn't wild. It was controlled by God. The wildfire multiplied quickly and greatly. God will release the fire of God like it has never been seen in the houses of prayer. It was greater and more awesome than has ever been seen. The individual prayer leaders were literally on fire. They were running into the darkness, leaving a smooth white path behind them, a path of righteousness. The more the enemy tried to attack or set traps, the greater the fire became in the leaders and the houses of prayer. And it raised up these prayer house leaders to be, to be great in power. Their prayers will make a great difference to the leaders of their nations. The prayers were raising up prayer leaders to be able to make an impact in their nations. The fire was see-through fire. The yes, prayer yes. leaders were the fire. The fire that they became took them, took them to the leaders of their nations. The prayer houses will be completely on fire by God's power that cannot be put out. There will be great power and demonstration in their nations. And one of the amazing things about this, this was given in January. God gave me this vision 
and this command in July. <clears throat> and we've had over 200 people, in fact, 250 people who are interested in setting up firehouses of prayer all over the world, all over the world. This isn't small. This is very, very large. And even today, um, where I was in the UK, people are really interested in knowing more. God is up to something very big and very mighty, and you are now part of it. So be blessed, everybody. My prayer is that that fire will touch you today, that fire of his glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. We say yes. We say yes, Lord. Okay. And let me see. Um, all righty. I, I want to thank you so much, Pastor Ann. And then I wanted to let everyone know that, um, well, that we have people from our network on with us today, too. Um, I'm Jennifer Gray, and I'm with the House of Prayer Global Network. And our network is so happy to hear about you all starting Houses of Prayer that they wanted to join with me today. And they want to be an encouragement to you all. They want to be praying. They're praying for you all, all of you all that are planning to start Houses of Prayer. We've been praying for you all. And um, the people on our network want to be available and supportive to you all. So I just uh, would like to let you know that um, we have people on our uh, joining us today from uh, Caracas, Venezuela. We have people joining us from Barbados. If you all would like to wave, those of you all that are uh, from the network that would like to um, uh, just wave to everyone. And I saw uh, someone from our House of Prayer in Costa Rica on. And oh, and we have, of course, Rachel from Bolivia. And I think we have somebody on from Colombia and um, many of the different places that would like to just welcome you all to the House of Prayer. And then I would like to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go into another presentation right now to a presentation. Okay. All righty. Can you, can you all see this okay? Can everyone see this? Yes, we can see it, Jennifer. Great. Okay. During our sessions today and in the upcoming months, we will be teaching on how you can develop a house of prayer in your nation and how you can develop prayer and worship for your nation in a way that will be both enjoyable and sustainable. We'll be looking at what is a house of prayer? What are some of the core values and heart standards for a house of prayer? And we'll be looking at practical considerations for starting a house of prayer. So that's our plan. Okay. And first of all, what is a house of prayer? What does it look like? In Isaiah 56, verse 7, God says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And you know, Jesus made this same statement in Mark eleven seventeen. So prayer must be so important to God. David said in the Bible in Psalm 132, that he was looking for, he wanted to find a dwelling place or a resting place for the mighty one. So the house of prayer provides that resting place for God, a place that can be permeated with the presence of God, where people can seek God, draw close to him, abide in his presence, enjoy God, and fellowship with him in prayer. 
In the house of prayer, we honor and lift up the Father God, His Son, the Lord Jesus, and their Spirit, the precious Holy Spirit. Okay, um, now let's go into this question. What does a house of prayer look like? I think the correct answer from what we've found out is that they won't all look the same. There are many expressions of the house of prayer depending on the location, the personalities of the people involved, giftings, culture, and what God may be mandating for each specific house of prayer. It could be in a house, it could be in a church, or it could be in a neutral location. There might be churches that will coordinate with one another to provide a, a place for prayer and worship in a central location. Or there might be churches that will coordinate with one another and one church might commit to pray on Mondays, and another would take Tuesdays, and another Wednesdays. However, they would coordinate and meet together for mutual support, encouragement, mentoring, and training. <clears throat> Since there are many expressions for the house of prayer, each region would need to seek God to find out what would be best for their area, for their region. Sometimes when people begin a house of prayer, they become so focused on trying to have so many prayer meetings on their schedule that they forget why they are doing this. <clears throat> Initially, don't focus so much on how many teams you have or how many hours a week you are providing prayer. It's more important to focus on the heart issues, <clears throat> the issues of why are we establishing houses of prayer? We do this because we love God and our goal is to connect with the heart of God. We do this to give our life as an offering, ministering to him. Many houses may begin small. Many houses of prayer may begin small. But it's so much better to begin small than to not begin at all. Some houses of prayer may begin with prayer meetings one or two times a week and then gradually increase the number of prayer meetings as they are able to do them and as the Lord leads. Some houses of prayer may be called to pray continually 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But some houses may not be called to 24 7 prayer. Actually, there have been very few houses of prayer in the United States that have been able to sustain 24 7 prayer. <clears throat> Some houses of prayer may have only three or four people to begin with, and that's okay. It's encouraging to know that the director of the largest house of prayer in the United States began his house of prayer in a single room with three or four people and a guitar player. It was also encouraging to me to learn that the great Azusa Street revival, that's a revival that occurred in the United States, and it was a very famous revival. And it was birthed from a home prayer meeting of three or four young adults praying for revival. So we are not to despise the day of small beginnings. Zechariah 4.10 says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. At the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, they are called to 24-7 prayer in the spirit of the Tabernacle of David. As David commissioned 4,000 musicians 
to worship before the Lord continually in the tabernacle of David, the international the IHOP model also has continual prayer and worship before the Lord 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This model prioritizes ministering to the Lord and honoring the presence of God intertwined with prayer, with intercession. So that's about the Tabernacle of David. A little bit about that. Um, And then we will talk about um, the, this model uses what we call intercessory worship, which is a combination of intercession or prayer with worship. This method often uses instruments and also quite often uses harp and bowl model, the harp and bowl model, or a variation of this model. This terminology comes from the Bible from Revelation 5, verse 8, where the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. In this verse, the harp speaks of worshiping God with musical instruments, and the bowls speak of the intercessory prayers of the church. So we can see that this is going on in heaven and that God must really like it because he has surrounded himself with unceasing worship and prayer. So we will go more into the harp and bowl model more in depth later in the training sessions. So, but I also want you to know I want you to know that you do not have to have worship in order to have a house of prayer. You can you can sing with or without instruments, or you can use any instrument you have, or if you um, or if you don't use instruments at all, that's okay. There are many houses of prayer that just use prayer and not and not use worship and intercession, uh, worship and instruments with instruments. So it's up to you and the Lord how you want to do this. Don't feel like you have to do it in a certain way or with a certain model, but that you can do it the way the Lord leads you. We have many houses of prayer that don't use instruments. Okay. And next, I want to know, I want you to know that another priority for this model of prayer and worship is developing a close relationship with Holy Spirit. We want to invite the Holy Spirit and we want to listen to his direction and guidance with prayer and with worship. We want to depend on him to reveal what's on the Father's heart and then to sing and pray what's on the Father's heart. We want to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us as we pray and worship what's on the Father's heart. So um, we also want to see, we, we also want to note that it's so awesome to see how the Holy Spirit gives brand new songs to the singers to sing as a method of worship and intercession. Their prayer and worship are based on the firm foundation of the Word of God. God gave Mike Bickle, who's the founder of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, four specific heart standards, and they spell out IHOP. The I is for intercession with night and day prayer. For them, it's 24-7 prayer and worship using unified corporate prayer. The next is H for holiness of heart. They believe that the end time church will be built upon holiness of heart. And O is for offering. The end time church 
will be built upon extravagant giving to the poor by living simply as an offering to give more to the harvest and the poor of the earth. We are not only to give offerings, but we are to live our lives in such a way that we are an offering. And the P stands for prevailing faith. In this next section, we will talk about enjoyable and sustainable prayer. When beginning a house of prayer and planning to have prayer for longer periods of time, it's important to have your prayer be enjoyable. The worship combined with the, combined with the prayer helps the prayer to become more enjoyable. For instance, I have some friends that recently went to visit the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, and they had planned to stay for two hours for one of the prayer sets. But they got there and were they were enjoying the prayer with the worship so much that they, they ended up staying five hours and still wanted to stay longer. So that's, that's an, a way to make our prayer enjoyable. Also, one of the keys to making prayer enjoyable is involved with relationship with God, developing a close relationship with Him, enjoying God and His presence, experiencing the Father's tenderness, then seeking God for what's on His heart and praying in agreement with His priorities and the desires of His heart. Next, I would like to talk about putting the first commandment first. It's a mistake to put the Great Commission before the first and greatest commandment. When Jesus was asked, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the greatest, this is the first and greatest commandment. I think that many times in ministry, we have this turned upside down. Sometimes we put our programs and activities and all these things, our agendas, before loving God with our whole heart and soul and, and strength and mind. So it's so important to put God at the very center. It's important to put the first commandment first with activities and programs flowing out of a place of prayer and worship with direction and guidance from the Lord. Prayer and worship is foundational to be able to accomplish the Great Commission in partnership with God. When we put loving God first, worshiping Him, and communicating with Him in prayer, our ministry to others can flow from a place of partnership with Him, that we can hear what's on His heart and then do what's on His heart. Dick Eastman, who directs the worldwide ministry, Every Home for Christ, said with, when they began 24-7 worship with intercession, their evangelism went up to a whole new level. So I believe that all the, the houses of prayer can do so much. The houses of prayer can, in addition to worshiping God, whoops, what's happening? <laughs> There we go. Uh, in addition to worshiping God, um, we also provide prayer backing for, for, um, for evangelism. So now I would like to talk about how we use the prayer focus and praying scriptures, use, using scriptural foundation for our prayer. Okay, when using this model, each prayer cycle has a prayer focus. For instance, our prayer focus 
could be the houses of prayer that God is raising up in Africa and India. If we were going to do a, um, a harp and bowl set right now, that could be our prayer focus, the, the new houses of prayer that are being raised up in Africa and India. So that would be our target. That way, everyone will be targeting the same prayer request. We will all be unified and on the same page. That means this is not the time to pray for Aunt Minnie's dog or even for a new job for you. Each intercessor will need to pray in agreement with the prayer focus. Also, when we pray, we want a scriptural foundation for our prayers. Some houses of prayer use the pr prayers prayed by the apostles in the New Testament. One house of prayer director said that they use these prayers because God has already said yes to these prayers. And I would like to ask Alexana to put these um, apostolic prayers up on our chat, the link for them. Okay, so you can find these prayers if you go on that link. You can find them on our website, on our resource section, in English, in Spanish, in Swahili, in Zulu, and in French. And you can run copies of these to be able to use them in your house of prayer. Now, I would like to show you just a brief video clip. I'm going to stop sharing mine and my stop sharing this. And we're going to bring up, Alexander is going to bring up for us a very brief video clip of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City of a harp and bowl um, set session that they did. In this session, you'll be able to see, you can see the intercessor is standing at the podium, and then you will see him pray, and then you will see the worship team, and the singers will sing what he prayed. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh, there it goes. for Kansas City out of 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12, asking the Lord for an outpouring of the Spirit. He would do and fulfill His purpose and promise be spoken over this city. God, we're asking you, give us the grace to walk worthy of this calling in Jesus' name. Help us. One, two, are listening. Help us walk worthy of your calling. Stir fresh faith Let in us our hearts. Our resolve. Help us, Lord, help us. Lord. Help us to lean in. Lord, would you give us grace and strength to walk worthy? God, did you wake in our, our hearts? By faith. Every good work by faith. Lord, we want to be ready. We, we want, want to be prepared. To be All that you've spoken over Kansas when City. You pour your spirit out. We want our ears inclined, listening to the spirit. A people sitting at your feet, ever listening, ever abiding. Father, we ask for every congregation in this city to be ready. Of your calling. Strengthen to walk in this to calling. Be pleasing in every good work. Help us to walk worthy of your calling. To be pleasing in every good work. Um, that was just a very brief video clip 
Um, and we're going to put links up that you can see the whole thing if you want to. At the end, we will be putting up links for everything that we're sharing today, the materials and all, uh, all the things that we're sharing today. So now you might have looked at that video and said, we don't have that many people in our house of prayer. We can't do what they do at IHOP. But what I want to show you next is a very simple way that it can be done with three or four people. And you don't have to do it exactly like they do in IHOP. Okay, Alexander's going to bring up a simple way of doing harp and bowl. And you'll see that they're also doing the worship with the intercession on this one too. for the church and the nation out of Colossians 1, 9 through 12. We do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Father, I'm praying that you would strengthen us with might. Lord, even in the midst of suffering, God, I pray that you would make us patient. So in Jesus' name, we ask for joy filled patient endurance for the church in our nation. Okay, so that should give you an idea of how you can also do this with fewer people. Um, and I received a text from Pastor. Oh, do we have translation going, Ruben? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, and I received a text from Pastor Ann asking if we would have the slides, the PowerPoint available. Um, we will try to have that available. I will have to check um, that isn't in um, isn't in our links, but I will see if we can have that available for you. Okay. And so next, we have our next presenter um, is Pastor Michael Maris, 
Uh, Pastor Michael is an associate pastor with Grace Church in Del Rio, Texas, right on the U.S.-Mexico border. And uh, Pastor Michael has been involved with the House of Prayer since um, since we began, since God brought us into this in 2010. And so uh, he's been involved with us in giving presentations for a while now. So um, let's bring up Pastor Michael Maris. Okay, I'm ready. Everybody good to go? All right. Well, first off, I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you uh, to prepare yourself because I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation, which means that I'm not just speaking words, but this is spirit and life going into your heart and soul. I pray that it would give you dreams, visions, and something to run with. I have 30 minutes, maybe a little less, to do the first session, which is the preeminence of Jesus. Jesus is better being beheld than he is being described. Are you open to beholding Jesus today with me? I heard a quote that said, anything that does not lead you to Jesus will be pointless and empty. If there was only one message I could ever give, it would be this one. If there was only one sermon that I could ever say, it would be this one. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. I believe that this message is the message of the Father. Jesus is the message of the Father. In the beginning of Matthew 16, Jesus came into a region and he asked people, who do men say that I am? I believe that that's the question Jesus asks all of us. There are many religions that say Jesus was a prophet. Many religions say that he was a great man. But what sets us apart and makes us different. I will continue reading. Verse 14. So they said, some say you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to them, Blessed are you, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Recently, my grandfather and grandmother passed away. I remember my grandfather talking about Jesus. When he would speak about Jesus, he would often cry. But I remember feeling a power come into the room. It was like the atmosphere would change. And I was no longer on earth in that moment. I felt like I was in heaven. And as my grandpa would talk to me about Jesus, 
I told him one time, Papa, Grandpa, I love talking to you about Jesus. He bent his head over and he started crying. And he said this to me. He said, that's the greatest thing anybody's ever said to me. That's all that matters. Preeminence means to be first place, to be number one. Colossians says this about Jesus. This is Colossians 1, 15 through 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. The biggest decision we make every day with our thoughts, with our will, with our emotions, is who is first place? Could we live our lives in such a way that Jesus is always first place? Where you go, I go. What you say, I say. If you, Jesus, tell me to give, then I will give. If you tell me to stay, then I will stay. Your will, not mine. Our lives lived from that one principle. The same principle that Jesus lived out daily. I remember when Jesus was going to the cross after he had told his disciples that he was going to go. He was in a garden and he was praying to the Father. The Bible says as he prayed, he was sweating drops of blood. He was in so much agony and distress. And in that moment, he cried out to the Father. He said, Father, if there is any other way, please remove this cup from me. And then he made the phrase, not my will, but your will be done. That phrase embodies the preeminence of Jesus, to live our lives without our will being done, but that his will would be done, that we would not be glorified, but that he would receive all the glory from our life. He alone is worthy to receive all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Following Jesus means that we actually have to follow him. 
You cannot be a follower of Jesus if you don't follow Jesus. I know it sounds simple, but many Christians call themselves followers of Christ and they do not follow him. Do not let that be us. Allow Jesus to have first place in your life, in your heart, and in your mind. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Do you guys understand the king of heaven and earth made himself of no reputation. And sometimes we wonder, why was Jesus given the highest name above every name? Why did God highly exalt him the way that he did? It's because Jesus went to the lowest place he sacrificed everything, and now he is seated in the highest place above all. I will continue reading this verse. He made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a servant, coming in the likeness of a man and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. In that moment, Jesus displayed his great love for you and I. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those on the earth, those underneath the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Only Jesus did that for you. Only Jesus is always faithful to you. We hope sometimes that men would be faithful to us, but Jesus is always faithful to to you. The moment you said yes to Jesus, that you accepted him as your Lord, you also said, Jesus, you are first place in my life. My will, my desires, my wants, and my needs are no longer first. You now are first. Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. Paul said in the scriptures, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does that mean? What Paul was saying is, I have surrendered my life so much that it's no longer mine. It doesn't even look like the same life I lived before. Now, my life resembles his life. I remember 
one time when I was preaching and a demon began to manifest in a young man. Some of the ladies that were next to him got scared and got up and moved away. You see, when this happens, you don't get a time out or a break to go pray. You have to be ready. And when this happened, I walked over to the young man and I looked in his eyes and I could not see his pupils. All that I could see was white. And I looked at him and I said, it's not me that you should be afraid of. The Bible says that I am hidden in Christ. And you don't even see me now. You see Jesus. The moment I said that, the demon would no longer look at me. It was afraid it would not look up. Because Jesus has all authority, all power, and the name above every name. As I put my hand on him, I just said simple words. Come out in the name of Jesus, the name above every name. As I did, he fell to the ground immediately and then got back up and said, what just happened? <laughs> Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth and underneath the earth. Amen. Every breath we breathe should belong to him. He alone has done everything for you. No one else has paid the price that Jesus paid for you to be free. That's why he should have first place in your life and in your heart. So many times we follow our own will. And I know it's hard because sometimes we forget. We wake up, we're hungry, we start thinking about what we want to do. But we must always ask, Jesus, my life does not belong to me. It has been bought with a price and I now live according to you. What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? Not my will, but yours be done. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. You can say that about yourself. You have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live in faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 3, 8 through 10 says this, I count all things a loss compared to the excellence of knowing Christ Jesus, for whom sake I have lost all things, I count them rubbish that I may gain Christ. My friends, 
if you lose everything in this world and you have Jesus, then you have everything you need. If you lose fathers, mothers, daughters, or children, but you still have Jesus, then you have everything you need. Because Jesus plus nothing is everything. Jesus is your great reward. Do you know what the reward of seeking Jesus is? It's finding him. Jesus alone is our reward. My greatest desire for you this day is that you would move so deeply in love with him that your life would no longer be your own, but your life would belong to him. That it would no longer resemble the life that you had before, but it would resemble the life that he has for you. Colossians says that he is the image of the invisible God. Now, I already read that scripture, so I'm coming to the close of this session. And right now, I would like to pray over you. If you would bow your head. Jesus, you alone are worthy of everything. You are worthy of all the glory and all the honor, all the power, all the might, all the dominion. It all belongs to you, Lord. Today, we recommit that our lives are not our own, but they belong to you. Jesus, let our words be your words. Let our heart become one with your heart. So that when people see us, they would come to know you. That our lives would be lived in such a way that you would receive the glory from everything we do and everything we say. That when we speak to our families and our friends, that we would be so consumed with you that your love would come out of us and it would touch all those who are around us. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you glory. For you alone are worthy to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that comes to the end of session one. And now I'm going to talk to you about the secret place. Um, Michael, before you start, we need to do just a, a brief modification with the translators. Okay. Um, okay. And Ruben, can you go ahead and make the change that we talked about for us? Okay. Now, Abigail is 
uh, up to translate. Okay, you tell us when Michael can start again. Hi. Okay. Très bien. Session number two, The Secret Place. I love to talk about The Secret Place because I have learned over the years that it's not a place that's hidden in secret, but it's a place where secrets become revelation to the children of God. What if I told you that there is a dwelling place of God on the earth where the Lord waits for you? And though it is open to all, that very few inhabit this place. Every man of God or woman of God has been forged and put together in this place. And you will not know the voice of the Lord well without visiting this place. Those who know the voice of the Lord most visit this place often. Sometimes we can spend weeks and even months planning a vacation or a trip of where we're going to go, how much money we're going to spend. And yet this one place of vast importance, many people don't plan to go very often. As I prepared this message, I felt the grief of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me that many of His own people rarely visit this place. It's a place that you cannot go by accident. Those who find this place go on purpose. But those who go there, they find their purpose in this place. I remember when I was a little child, my parents told us we were going to Disney World. Disney World is a park that has a bunch of roller coasters, a bunch of rides, and a bunch of fun things. When my parents told me this, I couldn't even sleep at night. I was so excited. That night I laid down and all I dreamed about was what I was going to do at Disney World the next day. I was so excited. David felt this same excitement for the presence of the Lord. He said in Psalms 84 verse 2, My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Psalms 84.10, David says, One day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. The courts of the Lord are the place of the Most High. David was saying, that he was so excited. He loved to be in the presence 
of the Lord in the secret place of the Most High. This place is the Most High. You cannot get higher than the Most High. Sometimes we are amazed by men who carry the presence of God and a revelation of God that seems like it comes from a different world. Did you know that all this power and authority and revelation is found in one place? And Jesus frequently visited this one place. Luke 5, 13 holds a key to the life of Jesus. Verse 13 says, Then he put out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left the man. Jesus charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. Verse 16 holds the key. It says, So he himself often withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. This was the key. The wilderness just means an uninhabited place, a place where no one else is at. We spend so many times in so many other places, yet this one place is the highest place we can be found. Here in my nation, we have so many devices, so many computers, so many phones, TVs everywhere, radios always playing music. And we can spend so much time on these things, but do we set apart time for this place that scripture calls the most high place where the secrets of God are revealed to the hearts of men. I ask that today the Lord would create a love in us for the secret place and a desire to constantly be found in this place. If you want to know how to walk in the power of God, how to clearly discern the voice of God, you must visit the secret place of God. Men and women of God are not fashioned in front of a crowd of people. They are formed in a secret place behind a closed door where only God sees them. In that place, the Lord forms you to become like himself. Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. What does this mean? This means that if we will call to the Lord, He will share His secrets with us. 
How many of you know that you don't share secrets with everybody? You only share secrets with close friends. And when you become saved, the Lord will speak to you loudly, so you have to hear him. But when you mature as a Christian, the Lord will require you to be attentive to his very whispers. You see, when we were young, our parents fed us by their spoon. But now that we've become older, we are expected to feed ourselves with a spoon. So there is a maturity to a Christian where God requires more of you to walk in his glory. How many of you want to walk in the glory of the Lord? I do. I remember as I was praying, the Lord continued to speak to me, to call to him, and he would show me things that I did not know. I want to know the secrets of the Lord. I want to know him closer than any other man that lived. I hope that you would want to know him the same way. Psalms 25, 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The Lord says he wants to show us his secrets. But if we are not resting in the secret place of the Most High, then we will be found in a secret place of compromise. You see, you will be either in the secret place of God or in a secret place of sin. So the question is, not really if we visit the secret place, it's which secret place do we visit? If your relationship with God feels distant, then you have not been visiting the secret place. And maybe you would say, I haven't been really doing anything wrong, but my friend, allowing your relationship with God to disintegrate, that is wrong. Neglecting your relationship with the Father is wrong. We need to be able to practice being quiet in the secret place of God. Let's read Psalms 91 together. Psalms 91 says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. I want to tell you a story. This story is a true story of a husband and wife in the United States. They had children they were facing great financial difficulty. Just like many of us have faced or will face at some point in time. They did not know what to do. They could not find an answer. 
They did not know how they were going to take care of this problem. Together, they knelt down at their couch. All of their children were gone. No one was in the house but them. They knelt down at the couch and began to pray to the Lord. As soon as they began to pray, they heard a noise, a voice that said, If you need help, call 911. This startled them because they knew no one else was in the house. Then they heard the noise again. If you need help, call 911. They got up and started looking around the house to try to find where this voice came from. They went in the children's rooms. No one was there. They went down the hallways. No one was there. Look through the bathroom. No one was there. And then the husband opened the door to the garage. And there was a toy fire truck sitting on the floor. He walked over to the fire truck and pushed the button on it. And it said, if you need help, call 911. At that moment, the Lord spoke to the husband and said, the answer that you are looking for is Psalms 91.1. You will find your help in the secret place. How many of you know that there are many distractions that try to keep us from the secret place? But the secret place is where we learn the voice of the Lord. You see, if I am far away from you and I begin to whisper, then what I have said to you is a mystery. But if I come near to you and whisper, then the mystery turns in to a revelation. That's how the Lord gives us revelation of who he is. It's always in the secret place. I remember when I first began to visit the secret place, the Lord had to reteach me how to pray. Because churches often teach us to pray, to ask for many things, to say many things. But I have found that you cannot hear very well when your mouth is always open. And if you want to hear the voice of the Lord, then sometimes you need to close your mouth and listen for him to speak. I've found that in the secret place, if you are quiet, then you will learn to hear the voice of the Lord. After the Lord taught me this, my prayers changed because rather than going to a place and suddenly saying a lot of words, I would go to a place and I would quiet myself and I would listen for the voice of the Lord. And then when I heard him speak, I would say what he said. Matthew 6.6 6 speaks of this. Jesus said, 
when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door behind you, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. Where is your Father? He is in the secret place. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. It's not just talking about closing natural doors in your house or in your room or in your closet. It's also speaking of closing the doors in your mind and in your heart that distract you and try to keep you from hearing the Lord. Many of us know that when we go to pray, the phone starts ringing. The TV comes on. When you go to pray, all of the distractions try to come. This scripture says when you pray, close those doors because the Father is waiting for you to give revelation. The secret place is how you bring heaven to earth. We know the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. The secret place is how we learn to see what the Father's doing, hear what the Father's saying, and then we go do that. I will tell you a story. I am a pastor and I was praying to the Lord one morning in the church. I have an office on the second floor of the church. And as I was in the office praying, I came to a point in my prayer where I was complaining to the Lord about a woman in church who is always asking me these different questions, always wanting to have the lights brighter or lower, always wanting to have a different song. And I was praying to the Lord. And as I was asking the Lord, to help me with this situation, the Lord said something unique to me. He said this, Michael, I want you to ask me to show you the wonder that I have for her, the excitement that I have for her. Well, I thought, Lord, I don't want to ask you for that. But when Jesus begins to speak to you, it's so that he can show you something, so that he can give revelation to you. And so finally, I said, Okay, Lord, show me the wonder and excitement that you have for this woman. As soon as I said that, I was immediately taken into a vision. And in this vision, I saw the woman dancing back and forth before the Lord. She was an elderly woman. And I saw her spinning around before the Lord. And as I saw that, I felt the joy of the Lord for her. And as I saw that, I saw liquid light 
coming off of her. And it got me excited. So I stopped everything I was doing and I began to spin around the same way. And I saw the Lord spinning around her and the light that was coming off of her was actually the light of the Lord who was dancing around her. And as I set everything down, I began to do what I saw the Lord doing in this vision. I began to dance the same way, to spin the same way. And the atmosphere of the whole room began to change. The agitation that I was expressing to the Lord began to turn into joy. The um, sadness or the agitation, frustration that I had felt towards her began to melt away in the presence of the Lord. And I learned in that moment, the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is how you bring heaven to earth. You go into the secret place and I show you what I am doing. And then you walk into a room or an atmosphere. You begin to do the things that I have showed you to do and say what I have shown you to speak. And it changes from the earthly realm to the realm of heaven. This is how you take authority over atmospheres. You hear what the Lord is saying. You see what he is doing. And then you go and you speak what he has said. And you do what you have seen him do. The same way Jesus said that his words were not his, but they belonged to the Father. And that he could only say what he had heard the Father say and do what he had seen the Father do. The secret place of God is the place where what was a mystery becomes a revelation, where God teaches you to know his voice, to hear him, to walk with him, to say what he's saying, and to do what he's doing. After that vision, I came down to the lower floor of the church and I turned on a worship song and I began to dance around the church as I had just seen God dancing in the secret place. The whole church and atmosphere and room began to change because I learned how to bring heaven to earth. The secret place, the place of the Most High, is the place where God shows you who He is and allows you to become like Himself. It's where He reveals Himself to you and allows you to see Him as He truly is. Many times, in our lives, we have an idea of how we think the Lord is. And then we behold him and we find out that maybe he's not the way we thought he was. And we say sometimes, oh Jesus, that's different than I thought you were. You've changed, but Jesus never changes. You see, the secret place changes us to become like him. And the Lord is powerful. His words are mighty. They break every demonic stronghold. They heal every sickness. And when you learn to align your words in your life with the Lord's life, 
in the secret place, you begin to live the powerful life that you've dreamed of. My friends, I've come to the end of this session. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you would, bow your heads and I'm going to pray over you. Father, you said that you are in the secret place and that when we pray that you're there in secret and you will reward us openly. I ask, Lord, that you would create a desire in us to visit the secret place, to know you, Lord, to hear your voice, to learn to be able to discern every whisper and every movement of your spirit, that we would be led by your spirit that we would be so close to you that we would lean in just as john did to the chest of jesus at the final supper that we would be near to you enough to hear your whispers and to feel you move that we would be able to say that we know the voice of the Good Shepherd, and His voice alone will we follow. That every other voice in our heart, in our mind, would become quiet. That the voice of you, Lord, would become loud. That your voice would light up the inside of us and expose every dark and wicked thing, that we would remove it and repent and change. Lord, that your voice would awaken us in the morning and that it would lead us into sleep in the evening, that we would be found in the secret place of the Most High, that our dwelling would be your dwelling, that the place we love would be the place you live, that we too could say like David, my flesh cries out for the courts of the living God. This one thing I desire, this one thing that I seek, that I should dwell in the courts of the Lord and behold his beauty. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have just a few moments to play a worship song for you. And so I pray that in this moment, I'd be able to lead you in to the secret place. I belong 
doubts define me You're inside me You're my reality
we bless you this morning. We bless your name, Lord. For there is no one like you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory and honor. We come into your courts, Lord, to give you praise and to say that you are wonderful, Lord that you are mighty. That you are worthy of glory. And it is our honor to love you, Jesus. To praise you, Lord. And to give you glory. We bless your holy name today. We bless your holy name. The one who was and is and is to come. We say holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Holy is your name. We bless you today. We bless your name. And we praise you. For you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you so much, Pastor Michael. That was awesome. Uh, Michael, would you be willing to do a closing prayer? Um, so, Michael, and if you have any words that the Lord wants you to share, please include it. <laughs> okay. Um, before I pray... I just want to share what I believe the Lord is saying in this season. Um, the Lord has told me that we are in a transition season and things are beginning to rapidly change. And so I believe for you the same way that you are now in a transitional season, that the Lord is shifting rapidly things. And I believe that right now, that if you will lean into the Lord, that this is a season of uh, special, um, special grace of the Lord, but not just special grace, but um, special manifestations and outpouring of the Lord. The Lord told me a few weeks ago that the latter part of this year would be known as an outpouring. And so I just want to release that to you because after I gave that word in church, the next day my city received the most significant rain it had in the whole year. We were under a drought, and the drought ended that day. <laughs> and so the Lord is confirming with signs and wonders. So Lord, I ask today that you would release the outpouring of your spirit and the transition of the season that we're in to your children. I thank you, Father, that you have said that your house should be called a house of prayer for all nations. That right now you are raising up 
intercessors, men and women of God, who would go and dwell in the secret place. Lord, I thank you that where those prayer houses are found, that you would pour out of your Spirit on them, that they would have dreams, that they would have visions, that they would prophesy, that they would see you, that they would find you, Lord, and that this season would be a peculiar season of outpouring. Lord, I thank you that you have given us your Spirit, and that it will not be by might or our power that these houses of prayer are raised up, but it will be by your Spirit, Lord, that we would hear and be attentive to your Spirit, your calling. I say that right now, Father, you are releasing plans and dreams into the hearts of each one of those listening that blueprints right now are arriving, architectural plans to be able to build the house of prayer, direction for the next season, and confirming words and signs and wonders of your will. I thank you, Lord, that you make your voice clear to us and that we know your voice and we follow. Jesus, I bless today everyone who is watching this call or who will watch this call, that they would be ignited on the inside, that as David said, that you would light our candle and by you we could run through a troop and leap over a wall. Jesus, I thank you that you are now opening and enlightening the eyes of our understanding that we might know the hope of your calling and riches of your inheritance to us, the saints. I thank you, Father, that every single person on this call and meeting has a plan and a purpose that before the earth was created, you set out for them. I thank you that that plan is good, that that plan is exciting. Oh, that we can find ourselves in that plan and that we can follow you, Lord. And Jesus, more than anything, I ask, that as we go from this place, that you would lead us into a deeper revelation of who you are, that we would know you, that we would be friends of God, that we would walk with you in the cool of the day as Adam did. Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you glory. I bless the work of the Lord in the nations right now. Father, you said, ask of me to Jesus, and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. I decree over everyone listening that you are an inheritance of the Lord. You are a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, and your leaf will not wither, and everything your hand touches will be prosperous. Lord, I thank you for those who have come together to answer your call this morning, that your anointing right now would come upon them. I say, Lord, that your tangible anointing and presence would now come upon them and rise up on the inside of them. In Jesus' name, give us vision that we may be able to take the vision and to run with it. 
that we would do all that you have for us to do, that we would accomplish everything in your heart that you have set out for us, and that we would bring glory to your holy name. We give you all the thanks and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and honor and glory for everything that you've done today and for everything that's on your heart, for these houses of prayer, for the people that are here and that are preparing to start them. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. Be magnified, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, I, I would like to invite um, people from the House of Prayer Global Network to say, um, to encourage those that are um, preparing to start Houses of Prayer uh, if you on the chat, those of you from Hop Global, okay, here's a chat from Zinya, from uh, Costa Rica for everyone. And thank you all for chatting. Thank you, Bridget, Elhor, uh, Reverend Abbasi. Um, and thank you for Ray Rachel. Thank, uh -huh. thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Reuben, hallelujah. And I want to I want to type a blessing to you all too. I want to put a blessing to okay, thank you all so much for your chats and um, your interest, your patience. Oh, and we have something from David in Barbados. He says he encourages all of you. And we just want to say we love you all. And we're so thankful for you all. And Bishop um, Bishop Azanafa says, this is great. He's blessed so much. Okay, thank you all. Yes, and thank you all these, Reuben. Um, you know, too, let's see. Yes, and Reuben says, we pray the Lord gives you knowledge and revelation about the beauty of Jesus. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Joseph, thank you, Joseph. Thanks for the opportunity. You are blessed. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay, Alex, can you, can you um, translate the one from Daniel and the one from Hamilton Diaz? They're from, Dan Danielle is from Peru and Hamilton. Yeah, Daniel is from Peru. Yes. And he says that the Lord might help you and give you direction according to his. Okay. And then down here is a little bit lower is Hamilton Diaz from Nicaragua. Three down. Yeah. He says the Lord bless you. Continue blessing you uh, to everyone in this uh, network. Okay. And we have a blessing from Ebenezer. And, uh, and Joseph says God is creating a house of prayer. In Kenya, okay, okay. Oh, and Reuben translated from for Daniel. <laughs> um, Lori, oh, is that Daniel from Peru? The Lord help you and lead you according to His purposes. And Charlotte, glory unto Jesus, the only risen King. May the fire burn. <laughs> glory to God. Okay, and then Nancy from Kenya. Encouraging all in Jesus' name. <clears throat> in Phoenix, uh, thank you, God. Bless you all. And Peter, it's marvelous session. Thank you, Peter, for praying. And Apostle Stephen, we are more empowered. This is quite powerful. God bless this family. And Ebenezer says he's blessed. So thank you all for sharing um, we appreciate your attentiveness and we look forward to having other sessions that um, we will 
to hear more in about the house of prayer. And we, we just are so thankful for what God is doing with you all and around the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Okay. Um, Pastor Ann, did you want to say anything? Pastor Jennifer, I'd really like to just say thank you so much to you and your team. Um, I've been getting private messages, how much this is, people have been enjoying it. Um, I was greatly blessed by Michael's message, especially on the secret place. I want to re-listen to that again and again. That was powerful. Pastor Michael, thank you so much. Thank you to the translators. Yes. You've done an amazing job of <laughs> switching backwards and forwards from Spanish to French to Swahili. <laughs> you were very clear. It was so good. Bless you all. May the fire keep burning in your hearts. And the next session, Jennifer, is on the... Okay. The next one is uh, uh, Saturday, October the 8th. So thank you so much, Ruben and Alexana. Uh, and thank you, everyone who participated, everyone who, um, everyone who attended, everyone who helped us. I mean, mm. we. I'm so thankful for everyone that helped. We really needed all the help that you all gave. So thank you all so much. Um, and we do have. I see you all are still on. If you want, if anybody wants, I can share about some of the things we have available, but I don't want to keep people because I know it's late in some places and you need to probably get back to your houses. Um, May Jennifer, I've also posted all the information on our Firehouses of Prayer platform. Perfect. And we will be posting the recordings. And okay. Ruby has to do an amazing job of breaking them down be manageable yes yes and yes he <laughs> and his wife alexana brought up a lot of the things today so we're thankful for that um and yeah. may I say i was amazed at the amount of people that came on from india well done <laughs> everybody well done we had yeah. so many nations i lost count <laughs> God is doing a mighty thing. Yeah. Okay. And um, also, we have up the, for the link, we have our video. It says Global Online, uh, Hop Global Online Solemn Assembly. You all might be interested in taking a look at that one. It's really a harp and bowl session that our network did where we got to pray for all of our nations and we would like to do that also for africa and india uh, in december that's our plan so if you'd like to take a look at that um i don't know ruben can we highlight that or anything i don't know whether it can be highlighted or not so they could see that um so you can take a look at that and know that we want to do one of those for you all too in in December. And then um, Ruben uh, also uh, oversees our online streaming where people join us from their nations into our, our Facebook page and uh, they do their online streaming of their prayer and worship and uh, for their nations. And then other people can join in and pray for their nations at the same time. Um, and then we have some children's ministry materials. Also, we have a, oh, Alexander's helping us out here. Yeah, this is it. I, if you can see it, this is our, um, this is our Facebook page, our Hop Global Facebook page. And we have, here we have, um, some of the houses of prayer that are, um, streaming their sets. Uh, streaming their prayer meetings uh, with us so that we can all be in agreement and prayer, pray for their nations. So this is on our 
uh, on our Facebook page. Um, and Alexander would probably put up our our link for our Facebook page, uh, our Hop Global Facebook page, or maybe Ruben could uh, speak it, whichever way. Um, so if you want to take a look at any of that. And then our, our children's ministry, we are doing online children's conferences uh, because God has really put the children on our heart, and we've gotten so many words saying that the children will be a mighty army of God and that, um, okay, and so here, and here's one that um, Alexander just brought up here. Um, we are also teaching the children how to do a very simple harp and bowl. And as you can see up on the, um, on the page right now is the prayer focus for Ukrainian children that we did with the children. And um, uh, you know what, Ruben, I would love to, if people are still on and would like to see it, I would love to show your little two minute video. Alexana, you know, the one, the harp and bowl one that it's just a little video clip of the children, but it's Ruben did such a great job of, um, of kind of uh, encapsulating what it looks like. These children will be praying in Spanish, but you can get an idea of what this looks like. Um, okay, so is there a possibility of bringing up that uh, little short two-minute one? Alexana is amazing. She's bringing it right up. <laughs> Thank you, Alexana. Here it is. We, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have sound. Boys and girls, we're going to pray. <laughs> so today we're going to be praying for the nation of Chile. Así que hoy le vamos a pedir a Dios que abra nuestros ojos para poder ver. Ustedes quieren ver a Dios. Abre mis ojos, oh Cristo. Abre mis ojos, te pido. Yo quiero ver. Yo quiero verte. Te damos las gracias, Señor, porque nos permite reunirnos. Te pedimos, guarda a Chile, Señor, a mi país, que tú lo protejas y lo guíes, Señor, que protejas a las autoridades y que ellos puedan encontrar tu camino y poder darse cuenta que tú eres su rey y que contigo estará mejor que contigo lo tienen todo señor tú eres el rey de chile contigo lo tienen todo dios tú eres el rey de chile señor en su corazón este es tu padre amado y toma el control de cada nación cada nación y en este día toma el control de la nación de chile que el pilar de chile sea el amor que el pilar de chile sea el amor señor gracias niños que dios les bendiga adiós bendiciones. niños a todos. bendiciones a todos adiós. hasta luego adiós hasta luego chao Okay, so those are, uh, that's something that uh, we've been doing with the children. And, um, and the children love it. It's so, it's so good. Even little ones, we've had, like, Ruben, what are they, like three or four years old? And they are praying. And they're just amazing. <laughs> and they just love it. And they will stay on for several hours and just uh, be involved. It's pretty amazing what God's doing. So anyway, but but thank you all so much for being a blessing. We have really enjoyed connecting with all of you all today. Wow. Should we just all say goodbye? Yes, yes. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bless you. Bless you all. We'll see you in October. Bye. <laughs>
Hello, 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 hello. Yes, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Bye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. If you all want to unmute, you're welcome to. Welcome to unmute. Bye. 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 Bye.